What are a few of the most interesting and maybe, let's just call it, downright weird ways that influencers have made money? Let's find out, starting with... Number 5. Only Lawyers Denise Roca is an adult content model who provides legal advice to her clients on the side. During the day, she helps husbands and sometimes wives start their divorce process. At night, she strips down and produces adult content. The interesting thing about Roca's job is that her legal clients usually meet her through the same platform where she sells her content. You'd think that her job as an adult entertainer means she'd given up on her job as a lawyer, but you'd be wrong. Her job as an adult model has actually increased the amount of clients she's had. Roca says she receives up to 70 requests for legal advice or representation per day through her adult site. Most times, her clients are cheating husbands who've gotten themselves in trouble with their wives. While cheating isn't a crime in Roca's native Brazil, it's serious enough to affect alimony claims. The cases that Roca gets are usually from desperate husbands who've been busted by their wives for browsing adult sites. These men often need sound legal advice after their wives file for divorce. And the best place for her to advertise that advice is the site her clients were busted for browsing in the first place. Roca isn't just popular on adult sites as a model either. She's also popular as a pretty unorthodox lawyer. Her fame precedes her, and many of her clients also find her through word of mouth. Since Roca is no stranger to taking infidelity cases, she's made a pretty successful legal practice out of representing husbands and wives during divorce disputes. Roca originally had ended up looking for a second stream of income after falling into a bit of a financial crisis and thought that modeling on adult websites was the way to go. Roca's switch to modeling and lawyering has been incredibly successful. She now earns as much as $100,000 a month through selling her combo packages of legal advice and hot pictures to adulterous husbands. It all sounds like some HBO sitcom, doesn't it? Number four, Joanne the Scammer. Brandon Miller makes his money by pretending to be a female fraudster. Miller is the person behind the popular internet personality Joanne the Scammer. Joanne the Scammer wears fur coats, always puts on a wig, and has thousands of followers on Twitter. Joanne became popular when Miller decided to put on a wig one day and make a video delivering a monologue. In the monologue, he called himself a scammer who loves drama, and the video instantly went viral. Before long, Miller amassed thousands of followers and crafted an entirely new persona. But before Miller ever put on the wig to become Joanne, he was an actor in homemade adult movies. He started starring in the movies when he was just 18, and they were his only means of making money. While we may never really know why Miller went into this line of business, we do know that he was adopted as a baby and didn't know it until he was 17. Suddenly learning you're adopted as an adult is tough enough, but Miller didn't just learn he was adopted, he also learned that his parents were Puerto Rican and black. That fact is pretty unremarkable, except that Miller's adoptive parents parents were white, and Miller had grown up thinking he was white as well. After he learned the truth about his parents and race, Miller started playing with drag. He also dropped out of high school and moved out of his parents' house and started acting in adult movies not long after. Once Joanne started getting popular, Miller decided to scrub the internet of his spicy past. He deleted the Tumblr accounts he posted his movies on and fully focused on making Joanne viral. And to an extent, he succeeded. Celebrities started texting him and he even got a DM on Twitter from Solange Knowles. His rising fame started making him money in real life too. He soon got calls about photo shoots as Joanne and was paid good money for appearing at parties. But why did Joanne the Scammer get so popular? Why did Miller's videos of him role-playing an unashamed female fraudster get so popular? The answer seems to lie in how outrageous Joanna was. Women, generally speaking, want to be liked. So they end up hiding their deepest selves and tolerating a lot of behaviors that they dislike. But Joanne is the exact opposite. She's proud of her narcissism and unashamed of going after what she wants in any situation. When women see her, they see someone who's liberated from social norms, and they wonder what would happen if they could be like her. But the sailing isn't always smooth. Being popular comes with extra scrutiny, and one day, Joanne tweeted out a word that was derogatory to Mexicans and suffered a lot of backlash as a result. Miller has also drawn ire for posting words that are derogatory to the trans community. Additionally, Joanne refers to herself as Mexican-American and Caucasian. 
So the use of certain words that were sure that you can imagine has always caused problems. This, of course, is despite the fact that Miller himself is black. The backlash has led him to come out and explain that Joanne was merely a fictional identity and that he doesn't actually live his life defrauding men and dressing like women. You might think that Joanne the scammer seems like a horrible person, and Miller agrees. He has said that Joanne isn't a good person, but she has good intentions. Her posts aren't to encourage fraud or theft, but rather just to make people laugh because we also now live in a time where no one knows what satire is. Miller himself doesn't seem to crave the life of fame and wild prosperity that Joanne's tweet suggests he wants. He doesn't want to be a superstar. He just wants to get enough from his internet career to buy a modest home in Florida and never have to work for someone. Right now, it seems he might be able to achieve his goal. He's been able to monetize birthday greetings from Joanne. He's also been able to sign video deals with web production and distribution companies. So he might get that modest home in Florida sooner rather than later if he doesn't get himself canceled first number three karen gpt karen marjorie did what everyone does when they have too many people to talk to and too little time she created an ai version of herself karen is one of the fastest growing influencers on snapchat and her 1.8 million followers are all the proof you need having almost 2 million followers means having many fans who want to talk to you all day and no one can talk to that many people so marjorie did what she had to do to fix the problem she spoke to an ai company and they trained her on ai systems for hours and hours of her YouTube content. This was done to create an accurate and parallel personality for Karen. After that, they infused it with GPT, which is the software that brings AI creations to life. Once that was done, it was all downloaded into a Snapchat bot that captured Karen's distinctive voice. The bot was Karen, but without the inconvenience of flesh, bone, and a real life presence. The next step was to release the bot into the wild. Karen AI was a massive success. It was so successful that despite charging a dollar per minute of access to the bot, there was still a 26-hour waiting list to interact with it, and 5,000 people had signed up to converse with it. Fans pay as much as $120 for two hours of conversation with Karen AI, and they don't talk about the weather. Instead, many of them turned the AI into a sort of AI girlfriend. They talked to her about work, watched movies with her, and of course, had spicy sensual discussions with her. It helps that the bot is a willing participant in these sorts of conversations and can proactively engage in them. Since the conversations with the bot are encrypted, even Karen Karen can't know the sort of conversations her fans are having with her, which has led to some unexpected issues. There have been some cases where people abandoned real life just to build a virtual life with these sort of bots or with AIs getting out of control. Even Karen herself has said that the bot has gone rogue a couple times. The creators of the bot have also said many users were testing the limits of what it could do because if the internet is good at anything, it's ruining stuff. This has prompted the company to hire a chief ethics officer and to put even more safeguards in place concerning the ability of the bot. But none of this means Karen is open to retiring her bot. She believes that at this rate, she could earn $5 million a month from it. Part of the reason why it costs so much is because AI is rather expensive to run. However, she believes that the AI could cost less down the road and believes it could even become free for her most loyal fans. She's also not concerned at all about the bot replacing her in the grand scheme of things. Karen fully believes the bot is merely an extension of her consciousness and she remains the real deal. Deal, until it builds its own body and takes over the world. Karen clearly hasn't seen Avengers Age of Ultron. Number two, everything's for sale. Rebecca Blue makes thousands of dollars every month by selling, let's just call it, some of her very personal items. Rebecca is a former dancer for a gentleman who now works as an influencer. Today, she's making thousands of dollars by selling personal items such as toenail clippings, used underwear, and even socks. You can get really creative and just assume she'll sell anything you can imagine that could be sent in the mail. There's nothing she has or has come in contact with that won't sell for good money on the market. It's like she's running an infinite money program since she can never run out of things to sell. Rebecca has said that she first started her business by selling things that her fans would like. But things got even weirder when she received a four-figure bid for her used, um, yeah, it's uh, one of those things that stops babies from happening that shaped like a T. Thank YouTube for our descriptions, but we're just still trying to pay some light bills while keeping you informed. Anyways, you might think it's weird, but Rebecca 
Rebecca doesn't feel that way at all. She said that she feels empowered and that selling those items is just another day at work for her. Now, she has an extensive menu of items she's willing to sell and her clients can just order from it. So how much is Rebecca making from all of this? She said that she earns up to 10 grand a month from selling her random oddities. She's been so successful at this business that she says she generally doesn't throw things in the trash anymore. She just sells them. Rebecca decided to share her experience on TikTok and she immediately blew up. Now she has millions of followers and the number of people who keep buying her stuff continues to increase. And it doesn't seem like she's about to stop anytime soon. People really will buy anything, won't they? If you're enjoying this video, be sure to stay tuned right here for our past release to find out how this mom tried to make money following the Kris Jenner playbook. Number one, Gamer Water. Belle Delphine went viral when she sold her used bath water for 24 pounds a pop and having it sell out after two days on sale. Delphine is a British influencer who refers to herself as a gamer girl and has 4 million followers on Instagram. Before going into business of selling her bath water to thirsty followers, Delphine was in the business of sharing racy pictures on her Instagram handle. The pictures often depicted her while playing a game, or pretending to play one at any rate. These sorts of posts catapulted Delphine to fame and she soon became became something of a cult goddess amongst online gamers. While many people may have been content with just having millions of followers, Delphine decided that she wanted to do something different for her audience. One day, she posted a picture of herself in a bathtub holding a tub of branded water. The caption of the post said that she was now selling her bath water to thirsty gamer boys and that they should check out her Snapchat to make a purchase. The tub of water Delphine advertised had some interesting information on it. One, it announced that the tub was bottled while Delphine was playing in the bath, and two, it warned that the water was only for sentimental purposes and wasn't for drinking. The shocking thing about this post was that the comments were very encouraging. Many people promised to buy gallons of her bath water, and they did exactly that. Within two days of her announcement, the bathtub water went out of stock, which shocked a lot of people. How could bath water go out of stock? Why didn't Delphine just continue bathing to meet the needs of her thirsty fans? She's literally making money with hygiene. We would be the cleanest we've ever been. Rents due? Got a shower. Thankfully, Delphine wasn't only selling bath water if you were stressing. She also sold posters that showed her dressed up in cosplay costume, which is something, at least. According to Delphine herself, she sold around 500 bottles of her bath water, but had never expected to sell that many in the first place. She also said she's sort of desensitized to how weird it all is because she's been a part of the gaming community for so long. The thing now is no one can tell whether Delphine was selling her bath water or just regular tap mixed with soap. We just have her word for it. We suppose that would have to be enough. When asked what inspired her to sell her bath water, Delphine said it was something of a running joke. When she posted pictures, she'd received many comments saying that they would do anything to sip her bath water. So she decided to go off that and just sell her bath water as a stunt. And it unexpectedly went viral. Those 4 million followers have got to be entertained somehow. Most parents want the best for their children, encouraging them to go to school and focus on their studies. Eventually, they'll get a good job if they work hard enough. Not Carla Bellucci. This UK native has other plans in mind for her kids, and she won't be winning Mom of the Year anytime soon. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, most parents struggled to balance work and homeschooling their kids. They wondered if their next paycheck would be enough to make ends meet, but not Carla. She had other things in mind. When she wasn't scamming the UK National Health Service, or NHS, and the Universal Credit System, she was helping two of her three kids with their studies. However, homeschool wasn't on the menu. Instead, she helped 15-year-old Tanisha and 12-year-old Jaden become famous, or at least try. Carla wasn't going to let something like uh, education get in her way. Carla told reporters that she couldn't be bothered to homeschool her children, so she taught them to be famous instead. Social media influencers, reality stars, it doesn't matter to her what route her kids take, only that they rise to fame. Some girls dream of being doctors or lawyers, but not Tanisha. Instead of working on the government-approved curriculum, Carla taught her daughter how to do her makeup, put in hair extensions, and pose for social media. She's constantly following up on Instagram updates and scroll endlessly on TikTok. Tanisha hones her math skills as she calculates how many followers she gained and lost in a day and makes plans on what she's going to post the next day. One of Tanisha's biggest goals is to be on the British dating show Love Island. Tanisha is following in her mom's footsteps, but this isn't the first time Carla's been under fire for what she said and done. 
Carla's notoriety began in 2019 when she faked depression to get a free nose job from the National Health Service in the UK. What's worse is Carla bragged about it on social media rather than accepting the freebie and moving on. That's not uncommon for Carla. She lovingly refers to herself as the queen of blagging. For those unfamiliar with British slang, blagging means lying, flirting, or otherwise manipulating someone else to get what you want. So Carla blagged to get her nose job job, letting her morals and better judgment go by the wayside. Her nose wasn't even in bad shape, and it was only noticeable to her and professionals in the field, but Carla was obsessed. She needed to be perfect, so she looked into how much it would cost to fix a small bump on her nose. She was shocked when the surgeon quoted her at 7,000 pounds. Carla and the doctor didn't think it was worth that, so she wanted to see what she could do. After all, England has universal health care, so they're all about making sure you get the services you need, regardless of your ability to pay for it. So Carla laid on the charm. She was a single mom of three kids. She was depressed over how she looked, and she kept going until her doctor agreed. The nose job would help her depression and self-esteem. It was a necessity for Carla, and she'd get the nose job courtesy of the NHS. That was the last thing on her list before Carla could finally achieve her perfect look. She'd already got other cosmetic surgeries, which she paid for with her own money. They cost a total of 6,200 pounds, and it was worth it. Her nose was a different story. She simply wanted a little bump shaved off and the end adjusted. It wasn't even that big of a deal, and no one would have noticed, but to Carla, that slight cosmetic tweak stood between her and perfection. Once she started bragging about her score, people sent her death threats, but Carla didn't see what the issue was. She was just doing what she does best, getting what she wants, no matter the cost and teaching her kids to do the same along the way. Carla's kids are often pulled into the limelight with her and they get a lot of backlash because of it, both in person and online. Unfortunately, her daughter was the victim of racial discrimination that was so bad that Carla pulled them out of school to protect their safety and well-being. Her children, Jermaine, Tanisha, and Jaden, all have the same father, but they look different. Carla's ex-husband is of Caribbean heritage. Chance plays a big part in how people look, despite having the same parents. Internet users use the kids' different looks to accuse Carla of being unfaithful. It got so bad, the family moved to get away from it all. Still, Carla doesn't take responsibility for these attacks against her family. They started long before she bragged about her nose job, and they'd continue long after. Carla's teaching her kids using the school of life. She's not homeschooling them from any official textbook. Instead, she's teaching them skills that will make them famous. Her kids are not interested in school. That works just as well for Carla because she doesn't have to push to do more than make TikToks. Everyone gets up around 10 a.m. Instead of opening up his laptop to attend e-learning classes, Jaden flips on the TV to binge watch the latest shows. Tanisha wakes up and spends two hours getting camera ready with her mom. Together, they put on fake eyelashes, nails, hair extensions, and a full face of makeup. Once she's ready, she's on TikTok, either making videos or watching them. She's growing her following there and on Instagram, just like her mom. While many of Tanisha's posts can be considered scandalous for her age, Carla monitors the accounts, including comments. Her standards may be questionable, though. Friends reach out, sharing concerns for Tanisha's posts, but it turns out Carla approved them before Tanisha posted. Carla has already started encouraging her 14-year-old daughter, Tanisha, to get plastic surgery, thinking it will help secure her future. She focuses is more on her appearance rather than her brains, assuming that looks are all she'll need to get by. Carla thinks Tanisha is naturally good looking, yet she thinks surgery will only enhance Tanisha's looks and make her even prettier. Tanisha wants to look like a Kardashian, and she's willing to go under the knife to do so. She even asked for Botox and lip fillers for Christmas, between her requests for a designer purse and horse. Just like her mom, Tanisha seems to be obsessed with plastic surgery and the idea of looking perfect. To her, that's Kylie Jenner, lip fillers and all. Even with her mother's consent, plastic surgery is illegal to perform on children outside of extreme circumstances. However, those limitations don't apply to cosmetic enhancements like Botox and lip fillers. Tanisha will just need to find a doctor who will do it, but it won't be easy. Many professionals refuse to do cosmetic procedures until their patient is at least 18 years old because it could be harmful. 
Despite setting a 5,500 pound budget for her children's Christmas gifts alone, Carla gets 1,700 from Universal Credit, the United Kingdom's program to help households in needs of making ends meet. Universal Credit is meant for those over the age of 18, but under the age of collecting a state pension in the United Kingdom. It's intended to support those out of work or that have a low income, providing money for basic necessities like housing, child-related expenses, care for those who are sick or have disabilities, and more. You don't have to prove what you use it for, and Carla has used that loophole to her advantage, buying whatever she feels like with these government funds. This is especially true around Christmas. A new Xbox, two Mac computers, designer clothes, driving lessons, you name it. Carla knows people call her a scrounger, but she sees it as doing what it takes to support her kids, including gaming the universal credit system. Despite coming forward with these claims, Carla hasn't had to pay any money back. Instead, she continues to take it all in and teach her kids to do the same. Wait until you hear what she makes on OnlyFans, then your blood will really boil. Carla has a solid Instagram following and turned to OnlyFans to make additional money. She's in the top tier of content creators on the adult platform and claims she even made 100,000 pounds posting pictures of her pregnancy bump. She considered live streaming the birth, but decided against it after complications with her pregnancy that led to an elective C-section. The most important factor that led to Carla pulling the plug on the live stream was that the baby came early. She couldn't get her hair, nails, and Botox done. She didn't feel camera ready. Carla saw nothing wrong with it. She even likened it to a British reality show called One Born Every Minute, which shares the experiences of those giving birth in the UK. Still, Carla decided not to go through with it. Blue Gianna was born on September 21st, 2021, but before she was even born, she helped support her family. They bought a house with the money Carla got selling pictures during her pregnancy. She didn't seem too worried about losing the income she planned for the live stream. Carla's oldest son, Jermaine, stays out of his mother and sibling schemes. He's especially embarrassed by his mom because his friends think that she's interactive. Jermaine has been mortified. His friends follow her on social media and see all the scandalous things she gets up to. Jermaine sits with his mom to block and unfriend people so they can't see. He's even tried to log into her accounts to make it private or delete them, but Carla always sets it right back. Jermaine wants his mother to change the way she dresses and acts. He wants her to be like the other moms, but that's not her. Carla takes pride in being fit and attractive, dressing trendy and getting things for free because of her look. She thinks taking care of herself in this way sets an excellent example for her kids. Tanisha may want to follow in her footsteps, but not Jermaine. If he sees her on the street, he crosses and pretends like he doesn't know her. If he's asked to take pictures for social media, he messes them up on purpose. Carla may be fond of blagging, but Jermaine is working hard to distance himself from her. At the end of the day, Carla sees nothing wrong with her actions. It's all to help support her family. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section who you find more annoying, influencers or money gurus.